Hey everybody, this is Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for coming back to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today, we're gonna to do a bit of a deep dive on a topic that's been coming up a lot lately. We picked up a lot of new people interested in amateur radio and getting started, and the topic of Baofengs, FRS, and GMRS frequencies has come up. So we're gonna cover that topic today, but this is gonna to apply to any amateur radio, basically, uh, and I'm gonna explain. So anyway, hang on tight, let's get started. So what I'm going to endeavor to cover today is, is it legal to run FRS and GMRS frequencies on this radio? Spoiler alert, it's probably not. For FRS, it's pretty much a given that this is not approved for FRS. It's not really approved for GMRS, but we're gonna talk about that. And the journey starts with kind of a complicated thing that we've gotta dance around a little bit. Radios like this one, are part certified by the FCC. Part 90 includes LAN mobile radios, part 95 is FRS and GMRS, part 97 is amateur radio. The part documents, and basically it's a big long document that explains the rules to get certified to be a part huh, of that radio accreditation. Part 90 LAN mobile radio is used for like business frequencies like the drive through at the Wendy's or Walmart, things like that, where you have a couple of frequencies that you pay the FCC to access and you get your radios programmed to use it. Generally, unless you're dealing with a counterfeit Baofeng or one that's running fast and loose with the law, Baofengs are Part 90 certified. Okay, remember that, Part 90 certified. That doesn't give it the rights, if you will, to transmit on FRS or GMRS frequencies, part 97. The differences there, there are subtle, but there's actually hardware differences. This has an, a removable antenna, a front programmable screen, and runs four to five watts maximum output. FRS radios have much restricted output levels and antennas cannot be removable, and you definitely can't program in whatever frequency you want in the front. Case in point, uh, this little unit in here really only has controls to move up and down pre-identified channels, FRS channels, and change the volume, and, and a couple of other things. But this is just a family radio system radio. That's all it's for, is to just have a couple of channels you can cycle through and use. So the issues come in the fact that this is a part 90 radio not a part 95, as I've mentioned. However, and this is where it starts to get a little confusing, Baofengs do produce radios that are part 95 certified. You do have to look for them. They have separate model numbers. It's certainly not the UV5R, and they're gonna look a bit different. Mainly, it's not gonna have that keyboard in the front, this keypad, and it will likely have some kind of control on the top to switch between channels, and those channels will be preloaded from the factory, and they'll be for GMRS or FRS. Key point of note here as well, FRS does not require a license for use. GMRS does, to the tune of about $75. It's a family license, it's good for your whole family, and that paying that basically gives you access to use GMRS radios to get the higher power output and access to repeater systems that do exist in some areas. GMRS is a good service if you're interested in something that's kind of a step between FRS and amateur radio, GMRS sits right in the middle and might be good for your family, particularly if you have family members that want to play radio but don't want to get their amateur radio license yet. Now, the last thing, part 97 amateur radio. I said this is part 90 certified. Well, what is part 97 certified? Well, that's more like my FT3DR behind me made by Yesu. Does that mean we can't use these in the amateur radio frequency space? No, not at all. And the reason for that is unlike FRS and GMRS, which has very rigid restrictions on use, meaning from the factory, the radios must be hard coded, hard locked to the frequencies that they operate on. Amateurs have a very wide access of frequency space that they can use, particularly in the two meter and 70 centimeter band. You can take a Baofeng, make sure it doesn't program outside of the amateur radio spaces via its programming or just don't use it there, and you're fine to operate as an amateur in that space. Because again, we're licensed individuals, we understand the rules, we understand it's illegal to transmit, yes, on FRS frequencies with a Baofeng, or just as an amateur in general using your amateur radio equipment. That would be unlawful. If you took your amateur radio equipment that's kind of certified by you, you, the amateur radio licensed individual, 
is saying, yes, I know this is uh, in good operating order and is operating within the frequencies of my privilege area. Before we go any deeper, I kind of want to unpack what I just said about amateur radio. I can go take a, an electronic device, take it apart, and make a radio out of it. As long as I can guarantee it's transmitting in the frequency spaces that I'm allocated in, it's lawful. You can't do that with FRS and GMRS. That would be illegal if you transmitted in those spaces because those radios are not type accepted for use in that space. Amateur radio operators don't have to worry about that though because we are licensed to use those radios on those frequencies and we guarantee that it's following the guidelines set forth by the FCC. So if you're ever curious or you, or you don't really know how to go forward with your radio, pop it off, right? Take the battery out in the back and look at the label. The label should say something like FCC and then have a serial number. That serial number can be looked up online and I will post the link in the description for where you can go to search FCC license or part type accepted numbers, serial numbers for your individual radio. The Smoking Ape, who's another YouTube channel, did a deep dive on looking at these labels. I'm not gonna try and recreate what he did. I'll post the link in the description to his video. He did a really good job and you should go check it out. But to summarize it a bit, radios that have been type accepted in the past often will have a serial number. And if multiple revisions of a radio come out but don't deviate greatly from the electrical components from the first one, they can generally use the same ID with subtle variations and, and maybe subtle name changes. That's okay. So if you do see an FCC logo and then a number, you're likely okay. But, and this is where the Baofeng and other Chinese radios comes in, we can't really guarantee what they're doing or really what they're thinking when they made and produce these radios. There's some quirky business going on at some times. So it's always better to be a little safer than sorry. So when you ask me oftentimes on the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group and the Discord, should we use these on FRS? Or why can't I just use this on, on, uh, on FRS and GMRS? Well, one, because it's really not legal. And while the FCC is not really pursuing people that do this, and generally, I would assume people are operating lawfully when they use a Baofeng on FRS, GMRS. In the hard rule of the law, it is illegal. But I will uh, repeat what I just said. The FCC is really not policing this. So you would be transmitting with more power and, and most likely much better antennas by using a Baofeng on FRS frequencies. Likely, though, nobody's going to come after you unless you're doing something very nefarious with it. If you're just talking to your family at Disneyland or <laughs> I guess from one room to the other room while we're in the human malware virus world, uh, likely no one's going to really make a fuss. OK, so we covered part 90, part 95 to a point and amateur radio using Baofengs. And, and again, this is going to apply to just about any radio because while these come from the factory with um, with no restrictions on their frequency, other radios like my Yesu FT3DR there in the background is locked to only the amateur radio frequencies. However, most amateur radio companies have kind of a backdoor built into these things. There's usually a capacitor or a wire you can snip and remove and all of a sudden it opens up frequency uh, transmit capability in a much wider space than the amateur only space. That historically is referred to as the Mars cap mod. Mars being military auxiliary radio service or system, I forget. But the idea there is that's a separate frequency space outside of the amateur radio space. And when HTs like that one, or way back in the past, when HTs started getting popular, they would use amateur radio radios for amateur radio and for Mars, which is a volunteer military system. And the name just kind of stuck. So Mars has existed since then. There's also MERS, um, which has another set of frequencies that are devoted to it. And you can modify basically any ham radio to operate in any of those frequencies. Does that make it legal? No, it still does not. But again, people have been doing it for decades and there's very few instances I can think of where people get busted by the FCC unless they're doing something very illegal. So keep that in mind. So lastly, the thing I wanna hit is, is GMRS, transmitting to GMRS on the Baofeng. It's true that this just can't do FRS limitations. It's, it's way open in comparison to the FRS rules in part 95. 
Part 95 for GMRS though is a bit more open. You can have a different antenna. You can have much higher power output to the tune of, of an HT. Where you kind of run into some trouble is with this front programmable faceplate. Uh, that is a little bit problematic when it comes to GMRS rules. Many people make um, the, the statement that Baofengs are probably fine on GMRS. And again, nobody's really coming after you. I'm, I'm sorry to repeat that again. So I, I, I kind of feel the same, but given that I do kind of have this platform and I, and I don't want to lead you astray, and, and reminder, this isn't legal. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so this is not legal advice. I'm just kind of giving you the lay of the land in case you didn't know this. But it's generally my job, at least I try to, uh, steer people away from what they might get themselves into trouble with amateur radio. That's one of the things I try to do. Uh, so generally, my piece of advice is don't use these on FRS and GMRS. Use them for amateur radio. That's what they were kind of designed for. So what, what do you do then if you've programmed FRS and GMRS on these? Well, you can use Chirp, uh, like the video that I put up about a month or two ago. You can tell Chirp not to transmit on the FRS and GMRS frequencies. That's fine. You can just listen to FRS and GMRS and not key up. That's legal too. You just really can't transmit. So if you're just taking the straight and narrow rule of the law kind of thing, which is generally what I'm kind of obligated to tell you to do being out here on YouTube. And in the end, we're, we're all adults. We can make our own decisions. This is uh, a soft uh, line to cross. It's not that big a deal, but I kind of feel obligated to tell you what some of the nuances are, and then you can decide for yourself. So for myself personally, I, I may have a couple of radios that are programmed for FRS and GMRS, and you may have even seen them um, on the, my videos. At the same time, I, I never transmit there. I have FRS radios. I have GMRS radios. Um, they're fine to transmit on if that's what you want to do, right? There's not a whole lot of reason to have it all here, although I understand the argument of why you might want that. So I have included all the links to the Part 97 documentation provided by the FCC. I provided the link to Smoke and Ape's really good video that he does kind of dissecting FCC stickers, so make sure to check that out. If you have any more questions on where you can use FRS or GMRS frequencies and if you can run them on a Baofeng, post in the comments below. I know this can be kind of a, a heady conversation and, and again, I'm, I'm just giving you what I think is the letter of the law and again, you decide you're the adult here. Generally, we don't advocate people do that on the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group, Discord, etc. So just keep that in mind if you're, if you're posting about it. But, um, you know, remember, we're just trying to build a larger Ham Radio community and it helps to provide the information so you can decide, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're recommending it. Anyway, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. If this was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, because I do a live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Do check out our Facebook group and our Discord, and thank you very much for watching. See ya.